Hello and welcome to Popcorn Mumbles, the podcast where we dig into the back catalog to select a film or television show to rewatch. I'm your host, Cody Nestor. Alongside me is my co-host, Todd Hill. What's going on, guys? This week we've chosen the 2005 film Layer Cake. An unnamed mid-level cocaine dealer in London makes plans to step away from the criminal life. Before he can cut ties, the dealer supplier, Jimmy Price, draws him into a complicated pair of jobs involving kidnapping the teenage daughter of a rival gangster and brokering the purchase of a large shipment of ecstasy pills from a dealer known as the Duke, leading to a series of elaborate double crosses from all corners. Layer Cake was released on June 10th, 2005. On a budget of $6 million, it made $11 million. It has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 81% and an audience score of 84%. So, Todd, let's discuss Layer Cake. Spoilers are ahead. Okay. So, Todd, I'm going to bat the ball to you first here. So, um, did you know anything about Layer Cake before watching it? I had heard of this movie. Uh, it's just one of those I never picked up, never watched. I knew it was a Daniel Craig film, like, you know, his pre-Bond stuff, but I, I never watched it till this week. Yeah, it was one of those I'd seen it before. It's been years since I'd seen it. Like, I, I didn't watch it before seeing Casino Royale. It was one of those things, like, after Casino Royale and how much I love that and, you know, like Daniel Craig as an actor. It's like, oh, Layer Cake, this is kind of... Uh, it was his Bond audition in a way, really. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'll go back and watch it. And But it's been so long since I've seen it, I remembered absolutely nothing about it. Yeah. So uh, what were your, your first impressions, let's say, after after finishing, after watching the film? I actually enjoyed this movie. I've, I've always liked, you know, it's not really so much of a crime drama as it's a sort of a, you know, kind of street level uh, drug dealers kind of, you know, double crosses, triple crosses. <laughs> right. But, you know, I enjoy kind of stuff like that. You know, the, the world of crime. Yeah. Right. You know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, but I enjoyed it. I, I, it was a good watch. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, I mean, I haven't seen too many of them. Like, it's like, it's like a Guy Ritchie, it's like Guy Ritchie light. Yeah. It's yeah. Matthew Vaughn's first film, and that's kind of why we, we selected it this week and kind of in the lead up to uh, his new film, Argyle, coming out in uh, just a little, you know, a few weeks. Uh, I wanted to kind of go back and kind of look at some of Matthew Vaughn, and I was like, what, what better way to start than just his first kind of his yeah. first film? He hasn't done too many, but, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of go back to this one because it's uh, it also kind of fits. It does. We're, we're right in the middle of Bonjuary as well. So it, it is Daniel Craig. There is a lot of like this was the film that propelled him to that role and yeah. kind of was like like I said it was his audition for Bond pretty much so I kind of wanted to go back and uh, kind of uh, go through it and just kind of remember uh, what the film was even about and uh, it's, it's kind of become one of those kind of cult movies because as you can see or as you heard from my my intro a six million dollar budget it only made 11 million dollars didn't have a lot of box office yeah no not, yeah. not many people saw this at the time and I don't know how many people you would if you stop 10 people on the street how many people would have you, have you seen layer cake I'm familiar with layer cake yeah uh, is that a dessert is that a dessert not, like no it's Pepperidge a farm. it's a 2005 <laughs> crime film starring Daniel Craig yeah they'd be like I don't know what you're talking about guy Leave me alone. Stop yeah. touching me. Um, but like, I don't know. It's it is a good little movie. Like, it's not too complex. Like you talk about, there's there's double crosses and there's triple crosses, but there's never like you're never lost in it. It never gets really overly confusing. You can follow it exactly. It's never like okay, who is this and what? What did he? Did he? He was the guy who did the thing. It, it's never like that. It's it, narratively, it, it it flows along pretty nicely. It's a yeah. two hour ish movie. I think it's maybe even it's two hours or so, right under. I think it's, it was right, maybe like an hour forty five. Yeah, hour 50. something like that. Yeah. It, it runs the, the appropriate length of time. It's not too drawn out. It's not a three hour Scorsese film. Right. <laughs> not nothing against Scorsese, but it, it's not like a three hour real deep crime drama. So. Yeah. Todd, can you kind of take us a little bit through the plot here? Like, I don't want to, don't want to get too deep in it because there is a lot of like back and forth and, and double crosses. But can you kind of take us a little bit through the plot a little bit? So uh, basically, uh, we're introduced to uh, the guy with no name, the yeah. drug dealer with no name, the unnamed mid-level cocaine dealer. As I mentioned, he's he's represented by four X's. So 
quadruple X. We'll call you him quadruple you X. You can call him Daniel Craig. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, funny thing about this is I, you know, I try to do like, you know, just some little notes for every one of these movies so I can kind of have my place. And I'm like, what the hell was Daniel Craig's name in this? So he didn't have one. That's why I never couldn't go back and find it. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. When you're watching the movie, you don't even really think about it. Yeah. You really, and there's a note that I have later that I'll kind of spoil here. You know, the, this is based on a book and, you know, the author, you know, intended that the four X's were to kind of, it was intended to like be a placeholder and I'll give him a name later. And when the author was done with it, it's like, well, it, the narratively the story works without him having a name. Yeah. And when you're watching it, you really don't even think about it at all. So. My name, if you knew that, you'd be as clever as me. We kind of were basically introduced to him and he's got his own little, just kind of a small gang, you know, and he's just kind of, you know, he's making good, he's doing good, he's making his money, you know, and uh, he's, you know, he's kind of ready to give it up. He wants to step away from all this, but uh, they've kind of got a meeting set up for, the, uh, which is where their, uh, I guess, their boss or supplier, his name was Jimmy, mm-hmm. and uh, Jimmy's got uh, one couple big missions he wants him to take on before he hangs it up. Like you mentioned, he wants him to uh, find and locate the daughter of that rival uh, boss of theirs, and they also wants him to uh, help the Duke and his uh, gang of ignorance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, try to move a shit ton of ecstasy they've acquired. <laughs> yeah, and at the that beginning of the film, you kind of see Daniel Craig and kind of the inner workings of his little his little cocaine dealer uh, hustle. And he, you can see he's very meticulous. He's very rules based. Um, you know, we kind of get some. He's kind of our narrator through the film at the right. beginning of it, especially. Uh, he's got uh, kind of really three main people in his in his in his endeavor it's him it's Clarky played by Tom Hardy oh, yeah. who doesn't really get a lot to do in this he's just he's just Tom Hardy before yeah. he was Tom Hardy right. you know very early role for him as well um i think he's he's got another buddy i forget his name charlie maybe uh, no not charlie i I'm, i could be wrong but he's got another buddy and then his uh his other uh, kind of the guy that he kind of works for that's kind of a bridge between him and Jimmy is a guy named called Morty. Right. And we kind of, I like kind of seeing the inner workings. And like you said, he's on his way out. He's made his money. He's making a lot of money. And he, he's wanting to get out of the business. You know, he before something happens, before things go wrong, he's on his way out. We also see he's uh, he was kind of put by Jimmy. He was put onto this guy to actually help him, like, with his money and balance his books and launder his money for him. Yeah. That we'll kind of come back to a little bit later on. Right. Uh, the gangster that you you mentioned, he's, he he wants him to to find the daughter of Michael Gambon's character, who is, uh, if people the, don't know, the late Michael Gambon, Dumbledore fame. Right. Lots, lots of great roles. He wants him to find his daughter, and there's kind of a little subplot of that as well. But uh, tell us how things go wrong here, Todd with the ecstasy pills oh, man. and the Duke. So we find out that the Duke actually uh, stole those pills from like a, uh, a much bigger gang. Were they Russian? I can't remember if they were Russian. Uh, it's, it, does I don't it know matter? If they, I would say, <laughs> I don't think it really matters. It's one of those, like, it's, uh, we'll just say vague Eastern European. Yeah, they were much more well-established, much more dangerous group of people that the Duke's uh, ignorant posse stole all this ecstasy from. Yeah, exactly. And Jimmy wants uh, Daniel Craig to broker that deal to make Jimmy money, to buy the, get those ecstasy spills, find a buyer, make him a shit ton of money in the process. Right. So uh, from there, it's just uh, we find out that the the guys that they that uh, that they've got that actually stole from them have this uh, assassin type guy working for them called the Dragon. Yeah, uh, he pops up from time to time wanting to try to make Daniel Craig's life a living hell. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Morty's kind of uh, removed from the film early on, so we get a little backstory with uh, with Morty. So when things start going wrong with the deal with the Duke, because the Duke doesn't want to accept the price that Daniel Craig and company are offering, he's trying to explain like how you can't just you know who's going to be a buyer for this, like they're stolen property, blah blah blah. But uh, Morty, the go between, he he's taken out of the film pretty early because we see a little bit of his backstory. Him and Daniel Craig are just having a nice little 
uh, some tea and a meal, uh, you know, at a, at a cafe. Oh, yeah. And one of his, uh, Morty's old associates, who we see that actually got Morty busted and sent away to prison, kind of reappears, asks Morty for money, and Morty just beats the shit beats out of him. Beats him to like an inch of his life, Exactly. Much. Pours but, hot tea on him. Exactly. <laughs> like, puts him in a coma, and yeah. like, you're left, a lot of the movie is left, like, is that dude gonna, is he, you know, in the background scenes, is like, oh, they're still waiting to figure out if he dies or not, because if he dies, then Morty's on the hook for it. So, like, Morty's kind of taken out of the the film pretty early on, and Daniel's kind of left to his own devices to try to like figure stuff out with with not much help at all. And um, somewhere around around that time, we see that somebody you caps off the Duke. The Duke gets shot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't see it. You you assume it's the dragon, right? But we'll come to find out later on it's not the dragon. But yeah, someone takes out the Duke and his mouthy girlfriend. Who starts, you know, yapping about the cops and then starts saying police. She was really annoying. Yeah, exactly. She once, played that part to a T. Exactly. <laughs> once you uh once you get in to start saying you know, police and stuff, you, you got to You're gonna get capped. You got to go. <laughs> um but yeah, it's basically a lot of the the mid scenes, uh, we should mention. It's it's uh, another character that we haven't really talked about is Sienna Miller. Uh, and I, it's she's one of those like She's featured on the poster and stuff. She's like uh, and heavy in the marketing. She is basically um, Daniel Craig, future James Bond meets Ben Winshaw, future Q, Q <laughs> fu- his future quartermaster. Uh, I think his name is Sydney, if I'm not mistaken. Sydney, yeah. And he's got a girlfriend, Sienna Miller. I do not remember her name. I don't. I couldn't even tell you if she has a name in the movie, um, but. She's introduced, and she has a scene with uh, Daniel Craig where they almost have some sexy time, but they don't quite. He kind of meets uh, him and Sydney. You're kind of hanging out in a bar. She kind of uh, obviously has a kind of attraction to him. He has attraction to her. She right. slips him his number. They have an almost sexy time scene with a little bit of Sienna Miller nudity, and then that character goes nowhere. Right, she's, pretty much. She's, is she even in it after that point? She's there at the end when he's walking out. Right? Yeah, That's she comes. Her, yeah. She comes back. That's her. That's but it. she has very little to nothing to do in this film. She's just kind of there for a phone scene, the, the the club scene, a phone scene, a little sexy time bedroom scene that doesn't go anywhere because he gets kidnapped, and, and the then final a final scene. <laughs> yeah, she really has nothing to do. Uh, so talk about the the kidnap scene. So. Uh, XXXX <laughs> or Daniel Craig yeah, is taken up Craig. to the top of like a building looks like it's under construction and we find out uh, he's been kidnapped by uh, let's see I got his name here hold on Michael Gambon 80 Temple yes yes it was Michael Gambon the rival boss and uh, he starts to kind of put oh uh, four 4X straight you know like you <laughs> know telling him Jimmy ain't all that you know you know you know Jimmy's led you astray on a lot of stuff and uh we find out that we make of, funny Jimmy at the country club kind <laughs> right, of thing. Right, like he, yeah. Jimmy's a dumbass. Yeah. Like he, you think he's this big tough gangster, and we make fun of him every chance we yeah. get at our country club. And one of the guys that works for uh, Eddie's got like a you know a, a DVD, a recording of uh, Jimmy talking to. I think it was the cops. Was it the police he's in with? Where they've got that recording yeah. of him kind of, yeah, mm-hmm. spilling his guts about everything. And he actually, of course, he doesn't mention him by name because he's never mentioned by name. But he talks about this, you know, kind of up-and-coming drug dealer that's trying to get out that, you know, we're not going to let him out kind of thing. Yeah, he wants to fuck him over just because, like, I don't, he just doesn't like him for whatever yeah. reason. You know, he makes his money and he's good at his job. He, like, he thinks he's, like, slick and, like, a yeah. know-it-all and that kind of stuff. And he wants to just fuck him over for no reason. So he's kind of opening his eyes to you. Your world ain't exactly what you think it is. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, another character that we should mention here is uh, Gene. He's Gene. played by uh, Miles O'Brien, right. uh, Comini. <laughs> Miles O'Brien being his character from uh, Star Trek, right? Uh, but yeah, he's one of those that guys. Like he pops up in a lot of movies. Like, hey, it's that I, guy. I was the same way. He's I was that like, guy. I know he was in something in Star Trek, but I couldn't remember his character name. Miles O'Brien. Yeah. yeah, he was in um, stuff like Con Air. You know, yeah. he's like yeah. with John Cusack, and like he's just a, he's a that guy. He's yeah. in like a lot of different stuff. He plays Gene. He's kind of Jimmy's right hand, right. but then he kind of becomes um, kind of more of. Uh, Daniel Craig's kind of right hand and the kind of like advisor to him. Yeah. So at at, at one point, uh, once uh, Michael Gambon's character reveals to uh, 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 4X, we'll call him. <laughs> Gone full 4X. Uh, 4X. Um, that Jimmy's a rat, basically. Then Jimmy's got to go. Jimmy's got to go. And uh, Daniel Craig had previously, 
since he's being also being stalked by the dragon, the Eastern European hitman, he had borrowed a uh, very weird looking gun from Gene, uh, Gene yeah. which I think is like a Chinese like uh, municipal services type of weapon or something. I read something about it. It's a very weird looking. It's cool, but it's very weird looking. Yeah. And so he takes it upon himself to uh, gear up to put on the balaclava to put on the black, uh, you know, the black uh, kind of suit. Some early espionage yeah. infiltration. Yeah, exactly. And uh, he heads <laughs> off to Jimmy's house and uh, basically pops a cap in Jimmy and takes Jimmy off the board because, again, Jimmy was a rat. Jimmy had to go. I was thinking there for a second. You know, he kind of paused. He hesitated for a while. I'm like, is he going to do it? Is he going to pull off his mask right. and reveal who he is, then do it? Exactly. But, yeah, he popped him. He finally, he finally yeah. does pop him, exactly. Uh, and the Duke has already been removed off it. There's a lot of, like, you know, we got to figure out who's still going to be the buyer. Like, he's still got to find a buyer for the Peels. Uh, basically, uh, Sydney or uh, not Sydney's, but the Duke's second in command, they're all kind of like, they pretty much went underground. Yeah. They're, they've seen the Duke's got popped by somebody. They're hiding. They're hiding, exactly. They're not coming up for air. He's got another, um, Daniel Craig's kind of working with another set of like drug dealers that are, he's trying to broker under the, another deal with for some of the drugs and things like that. But that's where we get into like the third act of this film. It's a lot of uh that's where you're like double, triple, who's working yeah. who's working for who who's type with stuff. who, yep, yeah. And it's it, it's too much to go into and too complicated to get into with something like this to like really break it down. But it's some good stuff. It's never like too much. It's never like aha like too yeah. it's never too much. It's it's a it's a good balance of like double crosses and and you know who's working for who and who's really got this plan kind of in action kind of thing. I'll give it the ultimate compliment right now. I could follow it. So. <laughs> That's saying something. That's folks. saying something. If Todd folks. could follow along yeah. <laughs> with the twists and turns of this film, yeah, then I, you know it's it's pretty narratively set pretty sound well. Sound and solid. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, things are kind of resolved in, in the third act. There's something I'm forgetting though that I wanted to kind of touch on. Uh, oh, the scene with... Uh, uh, the assassination attempt of the dragon. Oh yeah. So at one point, Daniel Craig, um, he he asked the there's there's another set of drug dealers he's working with that figures into our our last kind of who's working with who double cross type stuff, and he asked them for a guy that can help him try to take out the dragon because right. he's having like a phone tag session with the dragon, like uh, you know, do you know where I live? The dragon's like, no, well, fuck off, <laughs> you know those kind of <laughs> yeah. things, and he's having a little uh, a phone tag match with him, so he wants to try to take out the dragon, so he sets up a public meeting with him at like the observatory. Right. And right. he wants somebody to come along with him to basically assassinate and take out the dragon. Uh, they think they found their man, but unfortunately it's not. And the dragon actually ends up sniping uh, the sniper. Yeah, that was cool. It was cool. It's like, you didn't expect it. There's a note I have a kind of about that, about what was originally planned, but another little great scene, you just kind of see that dude's melon get popped. <laughs> and then it's like, again, there's not, there's, it's not an overly violent film, it really but it does isn't. have little small yeah. moments of, of violence that just punctuate the things going on. And another credit, like again, it's a Matthew Vaughn film. It's very early on in his career. It's his first. It's his first film. It's. It doesn't have, like, if you thought, if you think about a Matthew Vaughn film today, like to me, I would imagine a Matthew Vaughn film having like a a, a church scene from The Kingsman. Right. Like, that's kind of what I associate now with, like, Matthew Vaughn films. They need to have some kind of big... Over-the-top type. Action, yeah. one-shot yeah. kind of thing. This is not that. This is solid. It's not very action-heavy. It's more story-driven. There is punctuated moments of violence, but it's not overly violent. Um, and it does have a style to itself. It has a very nice look. It has a nice kind of color palette, kind of blues and greens. Like it's overall, it's a very nice, attractive looking film. It's it's a solidly solidly made. And there's, there's some visual stuff with the way some of the camera work and things are done. You can kind of see the seeds of some of the the things Matthew Vaughn would be known for, right, right. kind of uh, in the future. Um, I had a kind of a, a note here, not not a note, but a question for you, Todd. So I want you to to rank these Matthew Vaughn films for me. Okay. So I'll, I'll take out Stardust because I don't think either one of us ever seen Stardust. I haven't. Uh -uh. Um, did you see The King's Man? Is that the newest one? Yes. I have not. So okay. I have to recuse myself. You've seen myself the other two, that. right? Right. All right. So let's say Layer Cake, Kick Ass, X Men First Class, and Kingsman One and Kingsman Two. Rank those for me. Ooh. 
You know, there's something I love about kick ass. I'm right. probably going to put that at the top. Okay. Then I'll probably go uh, First Kingsman, uh, Layer Cake, uh, Second Kingsman. Mm -hmm. And then was the other one First Class? Mm -hmm. Ooh, let me redo that. Let me put <laughs> First Class before Second Kingsman. Okay. And then have Second Kingsman bring it up the rear. All right, pretty solid. Yeah, I think Kick Ass and probably First Kingsman is probably like uh, near the top for me. Like, I enjoyed this film overall. Like, I think it's right in that middle ground. I mean, he only has a filmography of. Uh, what is this going to be eight films soon when Argyle releases, but, uh, so not a lot to go for, but, uh, I mean, overall pretty, pretty solid, but, uh, Todd, take us through our, our kind of our, our end in here a little bit. Like I said, I don't want to get too deep into the, the double cross weeds and all that, but right. just kind of sum up our ending and our kind of our last scene here. So, uh, uh, Quadruple X <laughs> uh, has another meeting with Eddie, and uh, Eddie's like, well, he wants to buy those pills. He's like, you know, I'll give you three million bucks for him, but he's like, well, you know, I've already got another buyer. He's like, eh, he'll understand. Right. So he pretty much he wants those pills, but uh, you know, Quadruple X has to get the pills. Yeah. So he has to go back to uh, the Duke's old gang, and uh, he goes back to try to broker something with them. But then the cops break in. <laughs> and we find out it ain't really the cops. <laughs> it's a it's another set yeah. of uh, kind of uh, hucksters, kind of uh, confidence men that yeah. he's used to. He actually, he set them out looking for the girl. The girl we yeah. should mention the girl's plot is resolved. She's never found by Daniel Craig. She's already fine, and she's in rehab somewhere, basically, already. So uh, he gets the pills back and goes to have his meeting with Eddie. But, you know, of course, Eddie's not really going to give $300, $3 million for those ecstasy pills. Right. We have yet another double cross. Right. He's just going to take the pills from Daniel Craig, you know, give him a little life lesson learned in crime. And, uh, well, you know, he don't really wind up with them because that set of gangs that he was working with, he was going to sell the pills to originally. They come back and ambush and get those pills back. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So at the end, we kind of see uh, Quadruple X is kind of, he looks like he's set to be the leader of that little gang. You know, they're in that same restaurant and he's kind of holding court, but he's like, guys, I'm done. This is yours. I'm walking out. I'm like, man, he's getting away. He's, he's going to be a happy ending. He's going to walk out. That girls are waiting for him. Yeah. And then old Sydney shows up and pops a cap right in the middle of his chest and, he dies right there on the steps. <laughs> well, we technically don't see him we die. We don't see him die. But yeah. he, he's left in a bad way. It's a pretty good chest wound he had. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. I really didn't uh I really didn't remember the ending. Did you see the ending coming? I didn't see it coming. I mean I, I did I, you know, Sydney all through this film that seemed like kind of less like a bumbling doofus, like his wasn't the Duke his brother? Um, oh, or I don't uncle they, or uncle or something, or something like that. Like they that, were related yeah. somehow. They just both kind of seem like this kind of like bumbling doofuses. How did they get to where they even were? Right. And you know, I, he had enough <laughs> balls to walk up on the steps and shoot him in the chest. That's true. Because he took his girl. He took his girl. Yeah. Yeah. Let that be a lesson to everyone. Let that be out a there. lesson to everyone out there. Yeah. Exactly. Never rub another man's rhubarb. <laughs> uh, Todd, you want some uh, cake bits? And cake bits. Yeah. I love them. Let's do it. Uh, again, as we said, it was Daniel Craig's performance in this movie that caused producer uh, Barbara Broccoli to take notice and think he might be a good fit for James Bond. She was very, very, very much correct. Yes. Uh, when Gene gives 4X a handgun, producer and director Matthew Vaughn said on the DVD commentary that that scene uh, that Daniel Craig wants to be James Bond. Craig would be cast as James Bond in Casino Royale, and his co-star Ben Winshaw would appear in future Bond films with Craig. So they knew it before it even happened. The actor who played Duke is James uh, Jamie Foreman, son of notorious London gang enforcer Freddie Foreman. Oh. Layer Cake author J.J. Connolly des uh, designated his protagonist as uh, 4X in his mind until he could think of a suitable name for the character, ultimately decided that character didn't need a name for the story to be effective. Guy Ritchie was in place to direct, but another commitment meant he had to drop out. So as we said, it's this kind of Guy Ritchie. It's right. very much a Guy Ritchie uh, vein kind of film, yeah. like you know, in his vein of films. But it's it's, it's Guy Ritchie light. It does have more uh, Matthew Vaughn style than a Guy Ritchie film. But it's definitely if you just seen it, didn't know who directed it. Like, yeah, it's a Guy Ritchie film. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, the first draft of the screenplay was 408 pages long. The book on which it was based is 344 pages. Shit, bigger than the book, huh? <laughs> Uh, in the penultimate scene at Stoke Park Country Club, uh, 4X and his fellow drug dealers are eating a layer cake, as you mentioned when they're holding oh, that's court. That's right, they were eating a layer they're cake. They eating yeah. a layer cake. Daniel Craig and Ben Win uh, Winshaw would reunite years later in the Bond movie Skyfall, Spectre, No Time to Die, respectively playing Bond and Q. As of 2021, fellow actor Tom Hardy uh, has found or uh, has been touted as one of the high, uh, highly possible successors for Daniel Craig as the infamous MI6 spy. Uh -huh. In the original ending, the Sony Pictures, oh, excuse me, let me do that same again. The original ending, the ending Sony Pictures wanted, producer and director Matthew Vaughn to use, shows 4X driving off into the sunset with his new girlfriend. Vaughn secretly recorded the alternate ending, showing 4X being shot by Sydney to the screening audience and ended up using it based on popular votes, stating it was not like other American movie endings. Nice. I think that's a better ending than just driving yeah, off into the sunset. It works. It works. In the novel, the protagonist and his hired cold sniper shooting an American tourist, mistaking him for Hitman Dragon. This movie was originally going to play the scene out in the same way, but Sony Pictures felt uncomfortable with killing the American and asked for the scene to be changed. It was. Dragon snipes the sniper before he takes the shot at the tourist, which producer and director Matthew Vaughn's commentary state makes for a better scene. Would you agree, Todd? I would agree, yeah. All right, Todd. Uh, final thoughts and your review score for Layer Cake. Uh, you know, this is probably one of those movies that I would probably spent the rest of my life being aware of, but never would have watched. Uh, you know, Cody said, "Hey, we're going to we're going to check out Layer Cake for the pod this week." I'm like, "Okay," and I'm I'm glad I did. Uh, you can definitely see uh, the Daniel Craig uh, Bond influence in this film. Uh, if this is what won him the job, you can definitely see why here. Uh, I thought it was just a great little kind of street level gang crime type movie. Uh, I would recommend it if you haven't watched it. I gave Layer Cake a 7, which on our scale is good. Yeah, I echo those same thoughts. Uh, good, solid movie. It's not overly complicated. It's not overly long and blown out. It's just a good, solid, kind of low-level crime film with a really good cast and some interesting um, some interesting moments. Uh, like I said, not overly violent, but good, like, punctuated violence here and there. It's a very nice uh, looking film and very well directed. Uh, so I'm going to go with you as well. I'm going to give Layer Cake a 7 out of 10, which ranks it as good. Todd, tell everyone how they can find us and stay up to date with us on social media. We are at Tau Capes on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Tau Capes Podcast on Facebook. You can also email us at TauCapesPod at gmail.com. If you enjoy the show, please consider following us on your podcast platform of choice and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Popcorn Mumbles will return next week. We want to thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye, guys. See you, guys.